Oh! Oh, he's alive. Oh! And welcome to GT Not Live. For today, it is playtime. Poppy playtime. Uh, over the weekend, I got an enormous amount of requests from you guys saying that there is a new upload on the Poppy Playtime YouTube channel and that I have to react to it because it is game changing. It is important for the lore it is dark and disturbing and everything that we love here on the channel so that is why i'm why i'm here sitting on the couch today to dive into some poppy playtime lore stuff uh, but before we do i just want to call out that we have a new 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 voice behind the camera today we got justin hi i'm filling in for ash i'm doing my best you're you're filling in for ash who would also normally have sam filling in yes. for them but sam is also out so basically, you are, by process of elimination, the live body that I'm, we threw back. I'm doing my best. So, so if we have any tech issues in this episode, don't hashtag blame Ash. Hashtag blame Justin. Which is close to Jason. Hashtag blame Jason, which you're all familiar with. So Jason, Justin, one of the same. Yeah, you can blame Jason. That's fine. Are you an alternate persona of Jason or me? Uh, you know, we'll leave that up to the fans. Wow. Okay. Make it, choose your own adventure lore happening right there. Uh, I, I don't want to linger on you too long because, you know, it is not normally your job to have to uh, sit and banter with me back and forth. I'll but, do my best. But just for the, the fan base, uh, I'm curious if they know one key factoid about you from, that will live with you from now until the heat death of the universe. Like this is your defining character trait. What is the thing that you want them to know? Uh, like, I'm the Diet Coke guy and also the Sans is Nest guy. Uh, Ash is Remnant and also Erple guy and also the, the resident Gen Zer, the uh, Zoomer. Yes. Sam is the Michigan grandpa who okay. has uh, hairy legs uh, from our shower episode. And so who are you? Let's, you know what? I'm just, I'm scrambling here. Um, my favorite food is garlic bread. <laughs> and I'm from Texas, so okay. I'm, I'm the... Texas toast garlic bread guy. <laughs> Texas toast garlic bread guy. I love it. Uh, yeah, the thick, thick Texas toast. I mean, you get that in the freezer. I will sit down and eat an entire box of that by myself if you let leave me alone. So. Are you are you more of a crust or a center's guy? Because because I don't know if you guys have ever experienced the delight that is Texas toast garlic bread. It is fantastic. I grew up with that stuff as a mainstay in my refrigerator. Hashtag not spawn. But I mean, could be spawn. Te whoever makes Texas toast garlic bread. Please. Please. Please free garlic bread in the office. Load us up with all the garlic bread. But I will say, my parents and I had decidedly different approaches to the Texas toast garlic bread. I was decidedly a center only guy because I wanted that garlicky, buttery goodness in the soft, chewy center. But I, I'm not much of a, br a crust guy, whereas my parents were all about the crust. What are you? Uh, both. I'll, I'll, I'll eat the whole. I told you, you give me. I'll eat the cardboard. You give me a box, and I'll eat the whole box. The, 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 these things are so soaked with garlic and butter that it does leach into It'll the permeate. fibrousness of the box. Yes. That is true. Flavor. So yes, it is. It is flavor. Okay, so you're you're the equal opportunity garlic toaster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. So our Texan garlic breader behind the scenes, Justin, uh, is guiding us through today. I will try to m minimize uh, me putting you on the spot here. So for I'll do my best. Okay. For forgive me. You're doing you're, you're doing great. Hey. Yeah, there you go. Nice, nice salute. Uh, without any further ado, though, let's just hop into this. This is uh, restricted underscore restoration dot mp4. Uh, this is, was uploaded over the weekend. Uh, I hear that it's full of all sorts of interesting, exciting lore implications. I'm excited to explore it with you. I've got Photoshop pulled up in the background in case we need it, because I know usually we have to like edit out the egregious amount of time it takes us to load up Photoshop, and then it's all a headache. And with Justin being here, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to think ahead and do some of this job for you. So don't worry, you're all taken care of. I'm very appreciative. Thank I'm, you. I'm trying to make it as easy for you as possible. I know today's a rough day for you. So um, cool. Let's, let's just hop into it. Let's do it. So if you would be so kind as to segue... Oh, oh, I gotta push a button. What? Yep, there it is. There it is. Yeah. There. there it is. <laughs> Good. Seamless. That's why we run a professional operation. One hundred percent. How many theorists does it take to push a button? 
That's right, all the theorists. It's a theory for its own. Uh, it's one of our math episodes. Well, uh, according to F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration. Let's calculate. All right, um, so let's start this up. Restricted underscore restoration. Let's go. Oh, wait, uh, real quick. I did want to show off the, the, the thumbnail for this because I saw the thumbnail for this. So it appears to be about Braun, our, our dear friend, the dinosaur over here. And he looks like he's glitching out or something. I, I did not actually look closely at it. I just noticed that it was a Braun focused one, which is cool. He has some sort of, it looks like some sort of weird static under his nose. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of like what toy material that would be. You know, maybe it's it's some sort of like a carbon fiber. It's not, it doesn't look plastic by any means. It looks like there's layers here, and he's covered up with a, a like a thick plastic shell. Guy's like a less tasty M and M. But um, this this has a very to me this screams of our original Five Nights at Freddy's video thumbnail, like old old school first ever Five Nights at Freddy's, where it's like here's the mask, put the like scared human eyes in. Is that in fact you know actually I'm, I am curious now. We're going to start this, but a FNAF game theory one. Let's see if we can do it. That is not FNAF or game theory. There it is. I, I did, right? It's not my fault. That's YouTube's fault. Um, it's not the same eyes, unfortunately. No, the framing's different. Yeah, framing. Well, I knew the framing was different, but at least I'm like, oh, maybe it's the same eyes. But no, they are slightly different eyes. But uh, okay, without any further ado, let's hop into this two days ago. Ooh. Get into the medical procedure. Hold up. Okay. Good, good policy. Good uh, sanitary policy for the gloves. Justin, are you familiar with the, that policy? Uh, don't. Of how to take off the gloves? Keep them? Oh. <laughs> don't. No, no, no. There's a special way that you're supposed to take off your gloves that they teach you in science class. Oh, I was homeschooled. I don't know. <laughs> no, you never had to dissect a worm or frog. Or Actually, anything. I did. I did do that at all in the comfort of. I just did that independently. I mean, I'm ju Justin. I like Texas toast and hacking things apart with scalpel. It was my bedroom. You, I, yeah. Wait, really? It kind of was. Oh no! We've learned a lot about you in a very short amount of time. Oh no! The lore exists. Yeah, you're supposed to take off half the glove with one, off the glove with the other, and then as you take them off, they like fold into each other. So that way, all the goopy outsides stay on the inside. And it makes it less of a biohazard, and then you dispose of it, okay. which looks like to be what they're doing here. So compliments to them on their sanitary uh, policies here at Playtime Co. And here we see Braun sliced open, like they're doing surgery on him. So obviously for a long time we've suspected, at, at this point it feels outright proven, that there are some combination of humans, kids, employees, orphans, adults, basically anyone and everyone can get shoved, shoved into an animatronic suit is, is the term I use for it. But at this point, like shoved into these toys and being infused in these toys in some way. Um, so I'm wondering if, if this is in relation to that. But, uh, but yeah, just so we're on the same page. That's where we're at. You know, we think that all of these toys or at least the vast majority of these toys have some sort of spirit or biological component in here. Uh, some sort of viscera or whatever we've seen Poppy and kind of like her humanoid eyes and stuff. So the, some combination of real body parts, fake body parts, but souls and spirits are being infused into these things in some way. So maybe this will give us a clue as to how. Test subject is 59-year-old Thomas Clark, a full-time employee at Playtime Co. Since... Okay, hold up. Closed captions aren't on. So just, just so we have it, because again, we all know sometimes they hide things in closed captions. While we're paused... Anything interesting back here? Um, I don't know why. Is that? Can I zoom in or no? I can't. Okay. Um, is that a human skeleton? I... If it is, it only has one arm. Right. I, yeah. At the very least, the one arm thing is really interesting, right? It's odd that even if it is a human skeleton that you would have one arm. Although, like, looking at the biology of it, right? The, I guess the proportions roughly look the same. It doesn't have a neck. Like, it looks like the head is, is immediately affixed to the body. It doesn't look like it has a typical head. And from a body length to torso, it looks like it's slightly too tall. It, it almost looks like Slenderman. I wonder if this is some sort of anatomy of, like, Huggy Wuggy or something. Because he's got, like, the tall, thin, lanky arms. 
He's got like the thin, tall legs. He's very tall with a very short head, which reminds me of the silhouette of Huggy Wuggy. And like you call out, the fact that he's missing an arm is very strange. Like even if this is an anatomical chart for a human, you wouldn't be missing an arm. If one arm was up at a 90 degree angle, I'd, I'd definitely be like, yeah, that's... Right, right? Yeah. But no, it's, it's very strange. Um, the other thing that I'd throw out there too is when it comes to arms and missing arms, one thing uh, that comes to mind is, is this potentially uh, uh, the prototype, you know, who we've only seen operating with this kind of like one claw hand. We haven't gotten confirmation that there is a secondary body part in some way. So maybe this is an early anatomical design of, of them. Um, trying to think of what digestive system or maybe circulatory system is in there. But again, it feels very contained. Like it, if you're thinking this might be a human, you're not seeing a lot of that viscera and, and things that you would expect in that sort of like digestive system. So that's interesting. Here we've got one of the adoption posters that we've seen in the past. So I don't, this is, uh, this I don't think is any new information. And then here, what's interesting is we've got a division of Bunzo, right? So Bunzo has been one that's been kicking around for a while. Um, we've seen larger versions of this animat not animatronic, this larger versions of this toy, uh, specifically in chapter two as it descended down from the ceiling. Uh, but here, what's what's particularly interesting is divided up into two. So I don't know if this is meant to be a model or if this is how they are assembling these guys, like plop them together and then you, you put the put the little life goo in the middle, the remnants in the middle or whatever. Can you do wait? Can you do a remnant just in honor of Ash? Hey, it's me, Remnant. I don't know. You gotta go, Remnant? Remnant? Okay. I don't know why I went to immediately to Watto. Yeah, from... yeah what, what was the day? Hey, yo, it's me. I'm walking it's, here. It's, it's, it's totally Watto from episode one. I don't know why it's my brain went immediately. <laughs> it's like, you're like a Danny DeVito. You're like, hey, oh, I'm the red M&M nowadays. What's going on? Yep. It's, Animatronics it, no work on me. Yeah. It, it, it was a choice. You know, it was a choice. I regret. No, you know what? A lot of regrettable decisions happen here on GT Live, <laughs> let's be honest. A lot of regrettable things. Uh, so anyway, okay, so we got Bunzo, and then that seems to be about it. Maybe this is a, micro, a microscope. Anyway, I just wanted to call those out because that immediately struck me as interesting. Subject is 59-year-old Thomas Clark, a full-time employee at Playtime Co. since 1955. Okay, so we got a date here, 55. Please don't make me do math. And wait, he's 50, what did I say, 59, 57? 59 year old? What was he, yeah, was that his age or is that how long he's been working there? Here, a 15. Test subject is 59 year old Thomas 59 Clark. year old. So we don't know what this date is, no. but we can assume, well, if they're making, if they're, so if Playtime Co is still operational, we know that it closes sometime around like early 90s. So this guy's been, I mean, working here for a long time if he started in 50. Like, he's been working here for, like, 40 years. 1955. Six months ago. Yeah, so, like, say at the low end, this is, like, 90s. Like, he's he's been working here, like, 35, 30, 35 plus years. It's crazy. And he started young. Now, Mr. Clark of Sound Mind has volunteered for this experiment. Huh. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, like that right there outright kind of confirms it, right? So I'm assuming we're going to watch Thomas Clark, an employee of the company, get infused into a, a toy as part of an experiment in this process in order to preserve his own life. So again, you're seeing this idea of Playtime Co. infusing different people into the toys for different reasons. You know, uh, some of them seem like based on audio recordings, VHS tapes, they were like, you know, people who were... Uh, misbehaving or like spreading a bad press about Playtime Co. We've heard some like rumors or some some VHS tapes there like those people disappeared. We can assume logically that they were put into toys. Um, you know, we've been on the fence about whether the orphans and, and what level of the orphans are being put into the toys. Um, you know, there's been allusions to other employees being shoved into toys. But here, it, it, if this is early days of the, the Bigger Bodies project or the toy infusion process, you're seeing it being used almost as a as a means for good, right? Hey, here, I am an employee of this company. I've been here for a long time. I'm dying. Uh, and so please put me in a toy so I can live longer. That's that's really interesting. And, and I think that's an angle that none of us have really thought about. Like, oh, it's helping to preserve people's lives. That's kind of cool. Um, that also would tie it back to Poppy in the early days, right? Because we've had the theory that the CEO in some way started this whole process 
as a means of, hey, my, my daughter has died or is dying, and I'm looking for a way to bring her back to life or preserve, preserve her life. So maybe this thing started off with good intentions that just got corrupted as time went on. We have cool. Can you hear us, Thomas? Oh! oh, that is terrifying. That is terrifying. Oh, no. Oh, his eyes just... How wild is that? They put him in there and then you're just like staring up as a toy? Oh. Also, I, I, again, I, I still can't make out. What is this? What do we think this is? I'm really intrigued because it's not your typical toy stuff. Like it's, it almost looks like an organic netting of some form. Um, that might be me overthinking it, but if you're thinking about why this toy would look this way and what it would be composed of, like, yeah, it's, it's got a hard plastic shell, but inside is this organic material. Maybe that's some sort of like organic net. You know, maybe maybe a vein here as well, because again, we've seen in the past, like especially the Poppy Playtime initial trailer, we saw them using veins. You know, we saw them pulling out like bloody computer chips out of the back and stuff. So we know that there's organic pieces here. I'm also confused why he's beaten up. Like, why is he starting injured? And like, why aren't they infusing him into like a brand new toy? That seems odd to me. You know, if they're like, hey, yeah, you're, we know you're dying of cancer, so we're going to preserve you in a toy for this experiment. Why a toy that's, like, partially complete? Like this, I, like, oh, we need an entry point, but he's, like, all old and beaten up, and he's, chunks of his nose are missing. It's weird. It's a weird decision. Eyes open. Can you hear us, Thomas? 1199 displayed much more disorientation than we expected. Subsequent mental testing metrics were also cut practically in half. It's just okay. conjecture on my part, but I don't believe he knows where he is or what's happened to him. Huh. That's interesting. So it shows that there is a level of... This This goes back to uh, an earlier reaction that we did, and it wound up in a theory, actually, with one of these earlier VHS tapes where we see Huggy escape from the facility and ultimately wind up at the end of the video standing outside of just a normal home, right? And that led us to believe, like, hey... Maybe the spirit or person inside, who we assumed was a child at that point, was drawn to this place consciously or, or subconsciously, right? Like, maybe they don't know why they're drawn to this house, but this was the house that they grew up in, this was the house that they were fostered in, whatever. And so, even I as a monster, who might not have all awareness of my faculties, is still, like, is compelled to go here, despite losing my identity in this process. And so, this reads to me as early days of them figuring this out, right? Like, they don't know how it happened. He doesn't know where he is. Like, they're still testing out and, and like, fine-tuning where they are. So maybe this is one of the earliest toy. like, Braun is one of the earliest toys to get made in this game, which is pretty fascinating. But what about that experiment number? I think she said 1199. That's actually, oh, no, you're actually right. No, that's actually a good call-out, because uh, experiment 1009 is the prototype. No, so at this point, you would assume that there's been 110? Wow. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. I'm completely wrong. Unless they have a different numbering scheme, but... Right. Ah, uh, you know, they spin a wheel. Like, brrr. No, they, uh, to be fair, no, you're absolutely right to call that out because they have been in the in-game documents as well as these videos. They've been doing a good job of sequentially number, numbering things or at least keeping it pretty chronological or not chronological, numerological? What's... Uh, some kind of logical. Yeah, odd, it, logical in some way. Not logical by, by my standards, uh, but logical in some way where there is like lower numbers are earlier tests and higher numbers are, are later tests, right? So no, you're right. So this is actually deeper into the process than I would have expected. So it's interesting that they're still having a hard time transferring people, even though presumably they've done this for a while. To make matters worse, the other experiments could tell 1199 was different. Yeah, other experiments. That he's different. Main character energy. Yeah, right? Oh. Oh, he's so sad and confused. Oh, he's so small, too. I didn't... This must be... Because we've seen... Again, we've seen different sizes of all these toys. And I think that's another weird element of the series is you have the bigger bodies initiatives where you have giant Huggy serving as a security guard for the facility. But then you also have, like, small guys. And so this shows you something that we've not officially confirmed... But that's really interesting, and, and that's been kind of kicking along the back burner, is sometimes you see small toys crushed and shattered with blood stains around them, and we're like, oh, are they, 
uh, were the small toys living toys too, or were they just small version, like the actual toy versions of these large things? But this actually confirms that people are being infused into all different sizes of toy. Fascinating. He is so sweet though, look at him. Oh, oh no. Oh, this is, this is nightmarish. Wow. Oh, this is, this is so scary. So you got Pugapillar, which. I think that's his point of view. Yeah, no, no, totally. Yeah, I, I think, yes, I would, I would agree. But you got Pugapillar, we got Huggy. Is that Cat B? Another Huggy. Or a kiss, you know, Kissy Missy Huggy variant, right? And then Jumbo Huggy's already made? Which would make... Oh, what, here. What are their... Uh, Pops Playtime Experiment numbers. Let's see if it's... Do we have the whole... I, I, need, I need to, like, just make a list of all of these and what numbers they are, because... What number are you, Huggy? Experiment number... Oh, God, I... I Every time I need to like refresh myself on what it, okay experiment one one seven zero. On this day, experiment one one seven zero managed to escape Playtime Co-Factory through the open bay delivery door. Yes, so one one seven zero was was Poppy. And this is one one, eleven ninety nine. Eleven ninety nine. So okay, that makes sense. So from a t again, kudos to Poppy Playtime for leaving the clues there to establish a timeline. Because yeah, it makes sense that Poppy or sorry not Poppy that Huggy Wuggy exists here. Jumbo Huggy because he's an experiment like 20 iter 29 iterations earlier. So wild. But he and yet for some reason Braun is different. And you can t and you can see that it seems like they're not happy about it. Okay, so here real quick, let's go back to this cuz I I'm yeah, I missed this reveal. Damn. <laughs> Oh, poor Bron. Oh! Oh, he's alive. Oh! Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Jump scare. Oh! I did, I'm like, oh, I, maybe I should pause this later and see. Okay, so who do we got? We got... Whoo! <laughs> that got me. We got Candy Cane. We got so many Huggies. There are so many living Huggies. Which, again, goes to uh, Project Playtime which is the spin-off game where you see a lot of like Huggies summoning all these living sentient Huggies, but you see that multiple versions of the same character can be presumably brought to life. Uh, DJ Pugapillar is here. Um, mix it up with all your legs, DJ Pugapillar. Does the fact that he's... It, it is interesting that he's the only one with eyes actively lit, but I'm assuming the fact that everyone's freestanding and staring at him, and they say, like, oh, the others recognize that he's different, says that all of them are possessed. But it is interesting that he's the one that has glowing eyes. So... Oh, and you can even see DJ Pugapillar's mouth moving. Maybe not. I thought his... Is his no, his tongue's getting longer. Yeah, his tongue... Yeah, his tongue gets a little bit longer there for a second. Unless I'm imagining it completely. But it's like he's getting ready to eat Braun. Thomas. And who's this? Who is this? So we've got a clawed hand. It's a big hand. It's a jumbo guy. Is that a candy cat claw? Who would this be? Of all the toys that we've seen. Unless it's a new one. Here. Let's see, Candy Cat. No, Candy Cat doesn't have claws. Candy Cat has just like <laughs> little floofs. Unless they made the real version of Candy Cat, like the big jumbo version of Candy Cat, actually have claws. And then let's see, maybe Cat Bee? Does Cat Bee have claws? No. I mean, Huggy has, a, has he have an articulated hand. Like no, that. Huggy just wears mittens. And same with Kissy Missy? Yeah, Kissy Missy has mittens. Uh, obviously, Poppy Playtime is just a, a person, like a, a girl. Um, probably playtime, all toys. Who, I mean, you know, there's the robot, Braun, Bunzo, who doesn't have claws, 
all the variants of Huggy, Poppy. Yeah, so this is someone new is basically what this is confirming right here is, and I'm assuming maybe this is the villain of chapter three and this is our first tease as to who this could be. But unless they have changed the design of the large version of one of these toys, which based on how they've translated the Huggies, small Huggies into large Huggies, that is not the case. We have not seen that happen yet. Small Bunzo looks exactly like Big Bunzo. It's, it's literally a one for one. This is a new character. This is a new character who is attacking him right now. So this might be our first reveal of whoever our villain is in chapter three, which could be cool. And I know for a while people have been like, oh, it's going to be Braun. I, don't, I haven't thought it's Braun, um, Braun but uh, no, I think this might confirm it. Oh no! No! Oh my god! They would have killed him had the research team not intervened, and even then, there was still significant damage to the internal structures with some of the anatomy, namely the larynx and the thyroid, having been completely devoured. Larynx and thyroid, so okay, throat and thyroid. Really? That, that would also explain why he was so beat up in the previous footage. Oh, so. But this was. So is this being told in reverse chronology then? Because because it seems like when they bring him with terminal lung cancer. Now, Mr. Clark of Sound Mind has volunteered for this experiment. If his throat was damaged, that's why the side of his face would be would be gone. Would be torn up. Can you hear us, Thomas? Eleven ninety nine displayed much more disorientation orientation than we expected. Huh. Yeah, so you're thinking that maybe that moment here is not him first coming online as a toy. That is him post death. I mean, I it makes that actually makes a lot of sense because it's like why else would he be in a ruined toy? That's really interesting. That's also a really interesting, like a very different creative choice. So here, post being attacked. It's hard to make out, but no, you're right. It does look like it's got four legs, which is what we saw before. So right, it's got to be him. Yeah. They would have killed him had the research team not intervened, and even then, there was still significant damage to the internal structures with some of the anatomy, namely the larynx and the thyroid, having been completely devoured. It took. 12 hours of surgery to stabilize 1199. We keep him separated from the others now. Oh, oh, poor little baby. Oh, I've never felt so bad for a little living. Is that a, is that a sonogram thing? We might need a, oh man, a spectrograph or something. I thought my throat was making that noise there for a second. <laughs> I have, so, okay, a lot, a lot of things. I've never felt so sad. Let me complete the first thought, which is, like, I've never felt so sad for a little toy dinosaur. Like, that's so sad. This poor guy. Also, I think I, I think I got it, which is the reason why everyone is attacking him and the thing that makes him different is that he's an employee. I think that's what it's... I think that... Because this whole time I'm like, oh, they knew that he was different. They knew he was different. It's because unlike everyone else in there who is, you know, insert who they are here, like orphan, ex-journalist, bad, you know, uh, disobedient person, whatever. Unlike everyone else up to this point, maybe 1199 is the first employee that we see getting infused into a toy, which is why everyone would turn on him as soon as he's thrown into the, you know, the, the general populace, the general population of the prison, as it were. And so then they, they brutalize him, and that's why he has to be kept separate from that point forward. They're just jealous of his, his, his uh, sick days and paid time off. They are, yeah. He got, he got five weeks vacation. Health benefits. Oh, I mean, man. he got surgery for free. Those are pretty good health benefits. Yeah, that's right. I don't think anyone's sending him bills at home. You don't give me surgery for free. No, no. They were like, oh, excuse me. My, my huggy wuggy transplant surgery cost me an arm and a leg. I'm still paying it off. I'm going to be paying it off until I'm, you know, sent down the big train to, to play care. You know, 
they're, they're not paying me enough as security guard of this facility to, to pay for that oh, sort of surgery. Secu- does he have a little security badge? Does he have a little security badge? Uh, he's also got the, cr- the spring lock crank and then going to infuse himself into a yellow bunny suit. They're all connected! Oh my gosh. It's the spooky cinematic universe. I love it. Yep, that's it needs to happen. Like, at this point, there needs to be a Super Smash Brothers for, oh, yes. for, for this world. Yeah, that would be amazing. So, okay, so I feel really confident, actually, about that assertion, right? That the reason why Braun is singled out amongst everyone else is that he is the odd man out. He is the first employee to be put into Thomas. This guy, Thomas, is the first employee to be put into a toy. And as a result, everyone else attacks him. The, I do wonder, and and again, I, I need to go back and check the timeline of these things, you know, to see who is actually put into what bodies. But... I don't know if we've gotten confirmation that there is another adult who has been put into one of these bodies up until this point. So that might explain why he's disoriented in a way that they don't anticipate. Whereas maybe the kids, because they've undergone all these tests, and we see this in chapter two, right? The kids are undergoing these tests to determine their fitness and their, are you the right fit or not for the cat bee toy or the candy cat toy? And they're, and they're paired accordingly right we see that we see the kind of reports throughout that chapter of like hey we tested this girl a couple times she passes the test now we're going to put her into a candy cat i think it was and so it's one of those things where here maybe it's the fact that he's an adult and that's why he's disoriented or maybe it's the fact that he is mismatched in some way and that's why he's disoriented in a way that all a hundred plus experiments prior to him have not seen uh so that's that's really interesting this is this is really compelling. Uh, and then the last thing here. It's real short. So if you hear a high-pitched hum. It's not speech to text. What do I... L- See, I, I need to, it's been a while since I've had to use a, a spectrograph or anything. Can I do this? Is this going to let me do it or no? Sure, use my microphone, why not? Hello? Probably, it's probably not going to work. Especially because of our... Hello? Okay, this is, yeah, we might, I might need to just have a separate thing moving forward of this, but yeah, I would say with a fair amount of certainty, that whole thing at the end there, it's going to be a short little message. Because again, when it comes to like audio clues in media, you know, especially things that you have to run through a spectrograph or you have to process in some way and it yields you text. It's always going to sound a little bit unusual and a little bit weird. Here, because it's so high-pitched, a lot of times that is one of your initial signals of like, oh, there is something there, as opposed to, oh, it's just random ambience or, you know, random extra sound thrown in. The fact that it's also put at the very end here and that they made sure to include it as an export makes me very suspicious about that. So go out, That this is my mandate to you guys, go out and run it through a spectrogram. Uh, we did our ARG a couple years ago where there's a video on the channel. Well, we have a list of all the different tools that you can use to, to decode that sort of stuff because we did this ex- exact sort of thing. Uh, check it out. It, it might be too hard for us to do live in real time here just because of, you know, the tech setup that we have. I'd have to pull it up. I'd have to reinstall the stuff, whatever. Um, but I almost guarantee that there is something there that, that is worth discussing. Um, but yeah, across the board, this is one of the the biggest uploads that they've done so far and some one of the biggest pieces of news that we've had prior to the release of chapter three this is really exciting i'm curious what else they have going on here nothing in the description doco poor Braun. i feel so yes i know doco i agree uh for those who misunderstand anything i wrote an essay wow (laughs) wow okay let me just do the whole thing oh wow a lot of takedowns of this one too or not takedowns but analyses of this one during the experiment, he was shown this. Yeah, okay, we know this. Um, I'm assuming. This is concerning and horrifying. Yeah, this is dark. This is my favorite VHS by far. Super creepy and a lot more lore. Now wait for Matt Patton to make a theory about it. Oh, you bet. This is, I mean, this is crucial. This is an important piece of lore that we're seeing develop here because it's an important part of the timeline. 
where seeing them attack an employee for the first time and you see them viscerally being mad again like you see them actively antagonizing anyone who has put them in this situation um Thomas has been separated. Do you think Thomas is going to be an antagonist or an ally? That's a good point. Um, Cause I know a lot of people have been uh, theorizing or uh, not, maybe not theorizing, but predicting that we'll see Thomas at some point. I think, I don't know. Or is he just like an NPC? who's just going to, I think he might still be confused and beat up there. You know, I don't know. Um, I think if anything, he would probably be... So as our theories go, right, we believe that the player character in throughout Poppy Playtime is an ex-employee, right, who helped do some of these deeds, right? It is our job to kind of undo some of the deeds that have happened here or solve the mystery around what happened after we left, right? And so if indeed Thomas does remember that he was an employee or has been brutalized by the, these anima- the other toys, I feel like he would be a friend in this case. You know, that would be my guess. Uh, Hevon, welcome back to Can Matt Pat Extend This Two Minute Video Into Two Hours? Uh, hey. How long was it? Uh, we're sitting at 35 minutes. Well, you know what? I might not have been able to extend it to two hours, but I was able to extend it to two minutes. That's, I, you know, we're a fourth or to, 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 to two minutes. <laughs> I was able to extend it to 35 minutes, which, you know, that's that's like a 17 so, times so we, return we on your go investment. Back and we play the video at double speed and you just go as I mean, as you here's the thing. Can. If we really wanted to, I have it pulled up. Like if we really really wanted to extend it, which we don't have to. Like I, there is no reason for us to do this. Um shoot. Oh, the camera's in my way. There we go. Um I know I I pulled up Photoshop just in case we needed anything. Like we could do this real quick. Yeah, let's take a look at this. Why not? Colors. Uh let's see. This is the new one. That is easier for us to use. Brightness and contrast. That's literally telling me nothing. Uh, let's do tool colors. Let's do exposure. See what we got. It's not black, so let's do exposure. Ooh, there's definitely more back there. You think so? Oh, I, see, I can see more huggies. I see one, I two, three, four, five, six huggies. I think maybe one on the right side there. Right. We got two cat bees. And a pug a pillar? Didn't I, the big huggy's gone? Well, this is the second one. So there's two things that we see. We see this as version one, and then he looks the other direction. This is the first one, which I don't know who that guy is. In this is the candy. This must be Candy Cat. That's my best guess as to who that one is. Oh, this is saturation, tools, color, exposure. Dial it up. Right? Okay. I mean, that looks like Huggy Hands. Huggy, well, yeah, this is Huggy. This is Candy Cat. Another Huggy. Huggy. Can't make that one out. And, and small version of Pug-A-Pillar. Yeah. yeah. Table? Table. 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 My favorite, Solid. My favorite character. Right? Where's all the fan art for Table? <laughs> Not enough love for Table. So, I think... The exciting thing about this, right, is not only have we revealed a lot of lore, it's confirmed a lot of stuff for us that we've been suspecting for a while, but last, and I think most importantly, not to be overdone here, or overlooked here, is the fact that I, I believe that what we've done here is we've ca caught our f glimpse of the villain here, who is whatever this clawed creature with three fingers? One, two, three, maybe four, four fingers, is. Because it's got the claws... It, it's too big. It's not, I mean, it, it doesn't really feel like cat claws. You know, you don't have like little little pads. They, the fingers feel a little bit, little bit too long. What sort of creature does this remind us of? I mean, if it's got four fingers, that's the standard cartoon glove. Right. So it might, it, similar to Mommy Longlegs yeah. in chapter two, where she just kind of came out of nowhere and they're like, here's the new creature. I think this is, again, one of those toys that we don't know exists, but probably will. Um, does seem to be feline in some way, since that's most associated with kind of like claws like that, but the, the paw layout and shape are vastly different. Um, so we'll find out maybe, maybe, uh, soon. The fact that they're releasing this makes me think that maybe we're getting closer to the release of chapter three, which I would be very excited about. Um, because that one seems like it's been cooking for a while yeah. and, uh, it's been a while since chapter two, too. I know they've been busy with project playtime, but 
nothing beats a, a standard upload of your of your game. So standard upload of your game, yeah. And standard upload. What does that? What does that mean? Standard upload of our channel, uh, right? It's, we never do that. No, get out of here. Nothing. Nothing is standardized here. Who uh, who knows who's behind the camera at any given point in time? So anyway, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is restricted underscore restoration mp4 uh, on the Mob Entertainment channel. Found ourselves a new villain. We got ourselves some lore confirmation. We got some really interesting timeline details. And in general, uh, this one has gotten me more hyped than anything else. And it proves that Chapter 3 of Poppy Playtime is, is going to some really dark places. Like, we've seen dark stuff in these series before, but this one's getting pretty intense. You know, they're brutalizing this poor former cancer survivor. Like, whew, rough, man. It's tough. So, anyway... Thank you guys so much for watching, uh, and thank you for theorizing with me along down in the comments below. And as always, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video, a video for you. See ya!